What's up everyone? I figured uh, since I was doing a bunch of Pinguicula pollination, I'd probably try to do a video on it. I know there are other YouTube videos out there kind of demonstrating the process, but I figured I would uh, throw my hat into the ring and show you all kind of what my process is, albeit I am still very new to this. I've only had a couple successful pollinations so far, um, but I figured today would be a good time to break down that process. So kind of give you an overview of what I'm doing, how I have all of my pollinations organized, and then um, I'll try to do some close-ups on the flowers themselves and actually show you uh, what the act of pollination looks like with a couple of demonstrations here. So here are all of the pings that I have um, that I'll be working with today. And so I also have... Um, I've put together a spreadsheet kind of outlaying the different uh, pollinations that I want to make. So I have a column on the left with all of the seed parents. So those are going to be any plants that will be receiving pollen. I also have a column for the number of flowers that they have currently that I'll be pollinating. And then column C, I have uh, the pollen parents. So those will be the ones actually that I'll be taking pollen from and pollinating the seed parent flowers with. Um, and then I also have a couple other columns set up for uh, tracking the dates on pollen, pollination, whether I actually get seed set for these. Um, and then once seed is produced, you know, when was it sown and when was it germinated and keeping track of all of that. So um, right here, I have a number of uh, toothpicks set up. These are what I'm going to be using to kind of do my artificial pollination with. So in nature, pinguicula are hummingbird pollinated. So these toothpicks um, are the closest thing that are that you can easily kind of get your hands on to replicate that hummingbird beak pollination. I've also uh, gone through and taken a sharpie to the tips of each of these to paint them black. Now. That is just so that I can easily see by looking at the tips of the um, of the uh, toothpicks here whether I've actually gotten any pollen on them. So the black tips help the pollen kind of um, stand out a bit more against uh, the toothpicks. So I also have some masking tape uh, labeled with each of the pollen parents that I'm going to be taking pollen from. So Agnata crossa marginata. Gigantea moctezume, raspberry blonde, marginata, agnata red, anpa C, malongo cross cyclosecta, and mornensis A. Those are all of the plants that I will be um, ripping apart their flowers and getting pollen from. And then I also have a couple of, or a bunch of um, masking tape strip set up that I will wrap around the flowers of all of the plants receiving pollen so I can kind of keep track of um, which flower has which um, pollen on it. So these strips are just numbered uh, based off of the number of flowers. So um, one through four for some of these. And that kind of correlates to what I have set up here. So for example, Raspberry Blonde has two flowers. And I'm going to be crossing that with Agnata by Marginata and Gigantea cross Moctezume. Once the plants are pollinated and seeds are set or not set, I can go back and see um, which pollination event happened on that particular flower. So I can just go, okay, this is a flower on Raspberry Blonde, and it's got the number one or the number two label, so that was crossed with either Agnata Marginata or Gigantea Moctezume. So that's kind of the setup, and now I have things that I'll be, or how I'll be keeping track of things. So um, I'm going to uh, cut right here, and we'll get into how to actually do the pollination. Here we have a close-up of a flower. This is Morinensis var alba malongo, crossed with cyclosecta. So I'm going to just give a quick demonstration of uh, pinguicula flower morphology and then uh, show you how to actually get pollen from this. So this is going to be one of our pollen donors. And so pinguicula flowers, um, they are hummingbird pollinated. So to access the pollen and to actually do the pollination, uh, you have to be able to get inside the flower here. Now they have these long 
kind of uh, spurs on the back that um, the birds will kind of stick their beak into and in the process of doing so will um, either take pollen from the flower or pollinate the flower if they've already received pollen from another flower. So oddly enough, the easiest way that I've found to actually get at the flower parts is to um, remove some of these flower petals. So the the um, anthers itself are connected to the ovary, which is connected right to the base of the flower stem here. So removing some of the flower petals actually won't damage the reproductive organs of the flower and will actually make it much easier for us to get in and do our um, pollination here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, grab the top two petals in one hand and grab the bottom petals in the other hand and just I'm going to pull the bottom petals off of the flower and it's as simple as that. Now let's see if I can zoom in even more because the flower reproductive structures are quite small here so I'm going to do my best to kind of point out what we've got going on. Again this is pink flowers are really really small so bear with me here. It's a bit hard to tell because of the flower coloration, but um, so there's two parts that we want to pay attention to, the stigma and the anthers. So the stigma is the receptive part of the flower that's connected to the ovary, and this is what needs to get pollinated. Um, and then there are the anthers, which contain the pollen. Each pinguicula flower has both parts, stigma and anthers. So the tricky part is um, only one section of the stigma is receptive to pollen to prevent cross or self pollination. So let's see if I can get a good focus here. So this little flap right here, this is the stigma. And the outside of the stigma is the receptive part. If I pull it back, I will reveal not only the anthers and the pollen, but also this underside of the flap is um, the non-receptive part. So this um, being that the underside of the stigma is also right on top of the anthers and the pollen, it makes sense for that side to not be receptive because otherwise the flower would self-pollinate incredibly easily. So in order to get pollen off of here, I just have my toothpick. I'm going to lift up the stigma flap and I'm just going to rub my toothpick around here and try and get some of these pollen grains. Really, really hard to see, but um, that's a uh, part of working with pinguicula here. So this flower might be towards the end of its uh, receptiveness. I just got a couple of grains of pollen there. You can see them on the tip of my toothpick. Another reason why, or I guess the main reason why I have painted this black, but you can kind of see I've got some of those there. Doing my best to not rub any of this pollen on the receptive side of the stigma. And so now that I have that pollen collected, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go over to one of my other flowers and I'm going to attempt to pollinate that. All right, and this is um, the Morinensis J flower that I'm gonna pollinate with. So you can see I've already gone through and I've removed the bottom petals of this flower, exposing the reproductive structures. They're a little bit easier to see on this one. Um, again, there's the uh, stigma flap, outside being the receptive part, and underneath that, are the anthers and the pollen. This one's a little bit easier to see because the stigma is actually a different color than the rest of the flower. So I'm going to take my toothpick that has my pollen from my other plant and let's get a good focus here. Zoom in real close. Try to keep everything in focus and I'm just going to Remember the outside of the stigma is the receptive part, so I'm just going to rub that pollen on the outside of this stigma flap here. There wasn't a ton of pollen on that one, so it might not be totally successful, but that's why we're doing 
uh, multiple crosses here. So that's effectively pollinated. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I label that with the correct flower number. So that was um, Malongo cyclosecta on Moranensis J. So that's flower number two for Moranensis J. So I'm just going to grab that tag, wrap the uh, number two around the flower stalk. And then that way I'll be able to remember what was pollinated here. Now, I also want to take pollen from Moranensis J and use it on one of my other plants. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, take a toothpick and grab some pollen. All right, I grabbed my toothpick and um, actually exposed a different flower here. So let's go ahead and flip that over. So again, uh, just point things out. So this top petal is the um, receptive side of the stigma. It's a little flap here covering the anther. So we just lift up the flap and that exposes the anthers and where the pollen is located. So this pollen, if it were perfect, it would be yellow, but it looks like it's, it's white. So it might not be totally viable or, um, or what have you. So I'm just going to Rub my toothpick around here, hopefully trying to collect a little bit of pollen. Got a little bit on there, and um, that should be good to go to pollinate on another one. So just a quick note, too, on this toothpick. You can see on my fingers, uh, I've marked, uh, I was rubbing the toothpick on it to get some of the um, wet marker off of it. Um, just make sure the tip of your toothpick is dry when you go to uh, collect pollen. So. We're going to take this pollen and I'm going to do some pollination on a few other plants and we'll uh, see how it goes. So I'm in the middle of my pollination activity and I just wanted to take a quick shot to show um, the Anpa sea pollen. I got quite a bit off of that so that's going to be really nice for pollinating some of my other plants. All right, everybody has been pollinated. So you can see all of the flowers that received pollen, they have their lower lobes um, removed so that I could access the reproductive structures and they are all um, tagged and numbered so that I can reference what was pollinated and when. Here's a nice little shot of all of the lower lobes that I removed. Thank you for your sacrifice. Hopefully there were some really good um, successful pollinations in the bunch. I think based off of the number alone, I think I did 14 different pollinations. There should be at least one or two successful pollinations here. I don't think every single one is going to be successful. Um, there were definitely some flowers that had little to no pollen whatsoever. I think, um, sadly enough, the raspberry blonde seemed to have the least amount of pollen from all of the plants that I took pollen from. Um, and that seemed to kind of be the case for a lot of the more complex hybrids that I took pollen from, like uh, Malongo cross cyclosecta. Um, they all uh, didn't have as much pollen as uh, some of the peer species had. And actually, um, the one that I was least looking forward to working with, just based off of the size of the flowers alone, is a marginata. You can see just how tiny these flowers are. Um, it was good to, that I did a couple of pollinations on some bigger flowers before doing the emarginatas last because um, it was basically impossible to see the individual structures and I was basically just kind of working off of um, where I knew that the part should be, where the pollens were, where the pollen was located and stuff like that. And surprisingly, um, a marginata actually produced a ton of pollen for the size of the flowers. I was actually able to get a lot of pollen off of those. So I think out of the flowers that I pollinated, I'll probably see more success with the marginata pollen. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll keep an eye on what that looks like. And um, I'll probably post an update here once we have figured out whether any seed has actually set on some of these or uh, whether this was all a complete failure. But that's, uh, that's part of learning. You just keep trying. Um, 
keep practicing. Um, one thing I would say is that the flower structures are very delicate. Um, so just keep that in mind if you're going about pollinating this. You need really steady hands and a very clear view of what you're doing and you need to be very delicate. Um, some of the flower structures are extremely delicate, especially on the Malongo across the cyclosecta. The, the stigma on those, um, I think I broke the stigma on two of the flowers. That was actually the, you know, the plant that I was trying to get pollen from initially. So I was, it was a little bit of a practice plant, but you know, pings in general are pretty delicate plants and you need to be very careful when you're handling them, like when you're potting them up or taking pullings. And I would say you need to be especially careful with the flowers as you're going through and pollinating them. So hopefully you found this video interesting. Um, I always think, uh, you know, trying to uh, pollinate plants and make new versions of these plants and new exciting hybrids and crosses is always fun and interesting. So um, hopefully some of these took and I can post an update sometime in the future. Otherwise, thanks for watching.